Today I'm going to be showing you a double batch of my really easy no-fail pizza dough. For this recipe, we're going to need six cups of all-purpose flour, two cups of water at 120 degrees Fahrenheit, two tablespoons of granulated sugar, six tablespoons of vegetable oil, one teaspoon of yeast, and our last ingredient, one teaspoon of salt. So those are the ingredients, so let's get started. For those who don't know, this is a brand new KitchenAid commercial mixer which has only been on the market for a few months now. I do have an unboxing and quick review of all of the parts and everything that comes with this mixer in another video on my YouTube channel. I'll put a direct link to that video down in the description box below this video in case you're interested in actually watching that video. The first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the dough hook and I'm going to get in all of my flour. All of the sugar, our salt, and our yeast. Got our little dough hook back on. I'm going to close the security cage and I just want to mix all of these around just for a second. So I'm on speed number two at this point. Just want to get everything mixed around before I start adding in our water and oil. Okay, that's good enough. We'll get in our oil. I'm going to close the cage. I'm going to get it going to number two. And now I'm just going to start slowly pouring in the water. Get all of that water in there. Perfect. So instead of turning off the camera, I'm just going to let this go live just to show you how quickly everything comes together. And I'm not going to change the speed either, I'm just going to leave it just like that. You can see the dough slowly starting to come together. It looks very dry, but we'll just wait a little while and you'll see everything comes together really, really nicely. So at this point now you can see that a dough ball has formed, but it's still a little bit dry. It hasn't completely mixed in yet. We'll just let it go. And that there is completely moist all around. All of that flour has been well incorporated at this point. So I have not turned off my camera at all just so that you can see this live. And at this point now, I'm just going to let this go for about six minutes at this speed. I'm using speed number two. So I'm going to let this go for another six minutes and then I'll come back. So here we are a full six minutes later. 
I'm going to shut off my machine. I can tell my dough really, really looks nice. I'm going to bring that down. We'll remove our dough hook. Remove our bowl. And then I'll show you this nice dough. And look at how nice it just comes out of the bowl. Look at that. For those wondering, I'll just get all of our dough onto our scale. Fourteen seventy four grams, and that is fifty two ounces. There we have it. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to split this into four equal sized dough balls. I'm using a bench scraper to divide these up. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop the camera, I'm just going to weigh these out. I'm going to Make sure that they're all exactly the same and then I'm going to come back in a second. So at this point my dough balls 373 grams, 366, 367, 366. So a good job there. And then I'm just going to bring all of the edges in. Just get a nice dough ball. Pull everything towards the center and then like this just round it out like a big snowball so push bring it around bring it around and then I'm gonna spray all of my containers I'm gonna show you those in a second and then we'll finish off the video just like that perfect I like to store my dough balls as they're rising in a large container and I'll just show you what I use these here come in a three pack. These are Rubbermaid take alongs and I am not sure of the exact size, but they are medium bowls. Here we go. 1.5 liters or 6.2 cups, 50 ounces. So I've got some here all ready to go. So the first thing I do, I spray the inside with a vegetable spray. So once it's sprayed, I grab one of the dough balls, just pop it in, and I'll do that to the rest of them, and then I spray the top as well. If you don't have a vegetable spray, you can take some oil with your hand, or a cloth, or a little rubber, rubber spatula, or silicone brush, and just go around. So this one I've sprayed, so the, the bottom spraying keeps it from sticking to the actual container. The top spray keeps the dough ball nice and moist so it can rise. And then I just grab a little lid and pop it on there. So I'll finish up with the other ones and I'll come back in one second. So I've got my last two sprayed, the container as well as the top of each dough ball. So we'll get our lids on. And if I'm going to be using these tomorrow, what I will do is I will leave them on the counter for about an hour and a half, 90 minutes, and in that time, that gives the dough enough time to start rising. And if it starts rising well, you'll even hear the lids pop off. If you leave them out too long, they'll actually pop off. Once the dough starts rising up, and you're going to use them tomorrow, you can punch down the dough, and then just cover them back up, and pop them into the fridge until tomorrow. Now, if you don't have a cooking spray to spray inside, I'll show you what to do. So I've got a silicone brush, a little bit of vegetable oil, I can just put it in there or directly on my brush. And I'll just go around, up the sides, so you can see you don't need to have the spray. So you can use vegetable oil, canola oil, a little bit of olive oil, so that's nice. And then we'll take our really nice dough right in the middle, a little bit more oil on the top. And now make sure you get all of that covered. I 
And there we have it. And then I'll cover this one. And now we have our four doughs. And each one of these doughs is good enough to make a 14 inch pizza. So as you know, we have four doughs. I'm just gonna show you two here. These have been sitting here for about an hour and a half. You can hear when I just lift the lid a little bit, little pop, that's the CO2 that's being produced. The carbon di dioxide that's inside the actual dough. There we go. And look at that. Can you see the nice rise on that dough? Hopefully you can see that. Really, really nice. So, I guess to finish off this video, I'll just do a very fast pizza. I'll mention this again, but if you're going to make your dough today and you're not going to be eating the dough until tomorrow, you want to leave the dough out, covered like we did for about 90 minutes, then you're going to lift it up, let all the air out, you can close this back up and pop it into your fridge overnight. But at this point, I'll make a very fast pizza. This here is a 14 inch in diameter pizza tray and I have just sprayed it with some vegetable spray. I'm going to take my dough, I'm going to get my hand underneath the dough. I do not want to start really playing a lot with that dough so I just want to bring it out underneath my hand, place it in the middle and then I'm just going to take my hand and now start pressing it out into that circle. You don't want to start cutting up your dough and making smaller pizzas at this point. You do not want to play with this dough too much. So I'm just turning this and as I'm doing it I'm just pushing outward as I'm turning it. Any way you wish to do it in your house that's fine. So you can see I'm just pushing it. I want to make it thinner and larger. And if you don't want to have a large crust, then you can push down, depress on that outer edge. But I like a little bit of a crust, so I try to stay away from the extreme edge. I'm just going around, and you can see how nice this dough is, even after just one and a half hours. And this dough even gets better by the next day. If you make your dough, a day before, the flavors really, really start to develop in the fridge overnight if you let it go for a good 24 hour slow ferment. All the flavors really come together. And I do have my oven right now preheating to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm going to bake my pizza for about 10 minutes. That looks good, just like that. And then a little bit of homemade pizza sauce. And if you want to see me making that, I'll put a link in the description box underneath this video. So just get it up to almost the sides. You never want to go right to the edge on a pizza because you want this area to brown. And put as little or as much as you wish that's good and for today's video I'm going very simple I'm just making a cheese pizza I'm gonna grab some of my cheese I'm using mozzarella and I'll just get that right on there I'm gonna grate it directly onto my pizza just to save some time so my oven is set to 425 degrees Fahrenheit we're gonna bake this for about 10 minutes that looks pretty good. No rule on the cheese either. You can put on as much or as little as you want. I've been quite generous with the cheese here. That looks good. Any cheese that falls onto the actual pizza plate just get it back on your pizza because it'll just burn on your plate. And that looks good. Perfect. So now I'm gonna pop this into a 425 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 10 minutes. 
For those of you who want written ingredients, you can check that out at my Facebook page, facebook.com slash bake like a pro. All the ingredients are written down on my page. And if you make a pizza, I would love to see what you made at your house and you can post a picture on my Facebook wall as well. So here we have it, right out of the oven. 10 minutes at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And I wish you could all be here. This smells really, really amazing. Oh, that looks good. Look at that cheese. Woo. Lovely. So that's it for this really fun video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you wish. I really do appreciate that. That's it, and I'll see you next time.